Hi everyone, welcome back to RTS and welcome back to part two of our photo series. Yes, we're having fun. We're going to keep on talking about this category. Now up today, we're going to talk about taking better photos because I'm going to answer some questions I got and then also to tagging, editing, deleting, and that type of thing. And depending on how long this video gets, I may or may not include printing at home and online, online processing. It depends. YouTube upload time can be a little bit of a pickle, so we'll see how long I get chatting. Okay, they may, that may be part three in our photo series. So uh, I suggest go get a uh, cup of coffee and let's get after it. Okay, <laughs> let's talk photos. Okay, hold on. So let's talk about uh, getting better photos because some of my subscribers had asked me, uh, did I have a couple tips for that? And again, I am no expert. None. <laughs> I think the only thing I'm an expert in is talking. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. But I do have a couple of tips and tricks that things I've done over the years because someone had asked me, have I ever taken a photography class or online training? No, nothing. It's all about simply playing with your camera. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay. So, uh, better photos. My number one tip of to get better photos is to get a better camera, honestly. Uh, because if you think about it, there's so many things we're going to talk about in order to get a better photos. If you start with a good camera, uh, what you consider good. Now, let me talk about that just for a minute. What you consider good is not what someone else is going to consider good. So please remember that. And then please remember that we are hobbyists, meaning we do this as a hobby. This is not our job for most of us, and we're not photographers. So when I'm talking for scrapbookers, that's a whole different level than when you're talking about someone who's a photographer. So there's different levels. We're just on the levels that we want a good photo so we can record the story. We're not uh, framing it, selling it, putting it on the canvas, and it's going in a museum. There's two different levels to that. Okay, so remember that. And the more, of course, the more you take, you know, the more you snap, the better photos you're going to take. We all know that. But in today's standards, to get a better camera, that almost means getting a better phone because that is how most people take photos these days is with their phone. So I say the number one tip is get the best phone you can get because that will equal the best camera you can get. Because usually with most camera models, you get a better camera each time. That's what I think. It's not always the case, but that's an option. Don't, don't forget that. So when you are looking at a new phone, do some research as to the camera that comes with that, okay? Because then you're going to get a two for one, okay? A better camera. Well, I would say better phone would be a better camera. And that's a two for one. And then once you get a better uh, camera, then you're going to get better photos. That's a three for one. And then if you get better photos, that means no editing. That's a four for one. So again, I want to say that right off the bat because I think that's the majority of how people are taking their photos today. If you're just a hobbyist, you know, scrapbooker, that type of thing, is that you're using your phone. So better phone, better camera, better camera, better photos, better photos, no editing, and you save yourself some time there. So a little bit mon more money up front for that better phone can take the, re uh, can replace absolutely this or this. Okay. So keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. So then also too, with that, <laughs> uh, yes, let me point to something, uh, more expensive does not, does not always equal better. So I'm going to talk about a couple online places you can go for reviews when it comes to cameras and things like that, because that is something you definitely need to do on your own is to do the research or ask somebody who is like-minded. And we'll talk about that. So again, better, more expensive does not always mean better. Okay. And then just keep that in the back of your mind. <laughs> sometimes bigger is not better. And sometimes the most expensive is not better. You can get a $3,000 camera, but if you don't like it, then it's really not a better camera, is it? No, absolutely. Okay. And so then that was my next point. Do your research, ask questions and rely on someone who actually uses the product. <laughs> not someone in a store. And I just want to say this is because if you go to Best Buy, Circus City, Staples, the Apple store, any of that, you can get their opinion and they're going to give you their selling opinion, but you really need to rely on someone who actually uses the product. So that means, AKA, ask other scrapbookers um, what you're using. What do you like? What do you don't like? How much is that? Is that affordable? Ask somebody that's doing what you wanted to do. Okay. And for a lot of us, that means asking other scrapbookers. And that's why I've gotten a lot of questions about um, how I print my photos and what I use. And I'm going to cover all that because we can all learn and share with each other because what I use is not probably 
the best way. It's what I'm enjoying right now at the moment. Okay, so the two recommendations I want to give quickly, and I will have the links below for both of these. Um, if you're looking into different cameras and also the cameras that come on phones, the first place I want to recommend and the one I always go to is Steve stevesdigicams.com. Again, that link will be below. And so I think he gives a lot and I mean a lot of technical information about cameras, but with that technology that he gives, he's very trustworthy. I think he's very dependable, and he, I feel he's been very accurate with all the um, reviews I've read from his website. And then also, too, <clears throat> excuse me, I may have to get a drink. Uh, Steve always has a place <laughs> every time he reviews things he gives Steve's conclusion and so that's what I do I don't look at all the technical stuff I just want what Steve thinks and so I'll go to a tab that says Steve's conclusion on this camera or this camera or that camera on that phone and he will give you an honest review and he's very very professional uh, so he knows what he's talking about again that link will be below and the second place I want to recommend is a place called digital photography review is called dpreview.com that link will be below and they have all types of buying guides okay so you can go in with whatever price uh, budget price point you want and then you can look at your level the type of camera you want and then also to um Yes, the level. Because I have a note here that says, remember that we are a hobby. <laughs> We're a hobby uh, when it comes to our cameras. But uh, those two places I just talked about, Steve's Digicam and also Digital uh, Photography Review, those are for professional photographers, mostly. So take some of that with a grain of salt, okay? We just need something that does a good job, not something that's going to do the best job. We're not selling these photos, okay? So I just want to recommend those two places. And again, they will be listed below. Okay, so now let's talk about... Um, some tips to get some better photos, okay? And again, not an expert at all this. I did have a think, oh, yes, okay. I, and I gotta make a note here about something, about a reference point. I'm just gonna say this right now. No matter if you're talking about a phone or a camera or printing photos, anything, when you're looking at recommendations and you're seeing what's going to work and what's not going to work, remember one thing. You have to keep in mind what someone's reference point is. And what does that mean? Well, if I'm someone that I'm used to always getting my photos from Shutterfly or Snapfish, and then I get a professional uh, photo, well, of course, that professional photo is going to be way better than something from Shutterfly or Snapfish or online processors okay now for me I'm used to printing my photos at home so my reference point is pretty high because of what I use okay we're gonna talk about that so keep in mind whether you're talking about cameras or you're talking about getting a new phone or you're talking about uh, printing photos the person that you talk to keep in mind what is their reference point okay like a uh, Sally her reference point might be a snapfish photo um, and uh, Sarah, her reference point may be an Epson photo printed photo. Okay, so there's two reference points. It depends on where you're starting from as to whether you're going to like something or not like something, if that makes sense. Okay, so if you're used to using the newest iPhone camera, you're probably not going to be happy with a Canon camera that comes off the shelf. You have to remember what's your reference point. What's your starting point? What are you already working with? Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about some different tips that I have learned over the years when it came to t taking better photos. And again, I'm not an expert. I just like what I take because I play with what uh, I have as far as my cameras. So for me, I got asked, have I taken any formal training or classes or anything like that? No, I have not taken a single class or formal training or anything about photography nothing because when it comes to technical stuff my brain yeah it just you no know, I don't <laughs> I don't want to deal with technical stuff no I just want to do it I don't want to learn how to do it sometimes we have to okay price you know case in point right here this probably would be a better camera for me if I would take the time to learn it but no this is this suits all my needs so I have no desire nor do I have an inkling to want to sit down and and spend more time with this because uh, I just want to point and shoot and this point and shoot is not equaling this so again I haven't had any formal training but that doesn't mean they're not offered and you can get some at a very reasonable price and if uh, taking an online photo course I uh, just look for beginners because remember photographers 
um, they're in a whole different level than us as someone that's just a scrapbooker. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're taking an online class. You want to get the very, very, very beginning levels of photography. Okay, so I would say the best class, in my opinion, the best class you can ever take is the manual that comes with your iPhone, which I have mine above, or your camera. I think that's the best class you can take. <laughs> is read your manual, honestly. And I would say don't sit down and spend two or three days doing it. Read your manual one section at a time, that's what I do, and 15 minutes at a time, because that's about all my brain can take, is 15 minutes at a time. And so just learn one new setting a day. Don't try to learn four, okay? I think that's the easiest way. Uh, to learn some photography tips is to read your manual. There's a lot. And then there's a lot on YouTube. So when you go to YouTube, type in the camera or the iPhone or whatever device you're using and you will get a lot of tips and tricks from people that already own the same device that you do so definitely don't outrule YouTube it's free absolutely okay and then of course just playing around with your phone I mean that's uh, the phone and your camera honestly that's the best uh, class you're gonna get and what do they call that in field or on the field or <laughs> yes just play that's absolutely because that's uh, you're gonna find that when you're just playing you're giving yourself freedom your brain just kind of takes in that information I think easily when you're just playing and experimenting okay so um the one tip I want to say when I was uh, when I went digital this was in 2004 and I started to play around with my camera I would say the biggest thing that I learned was to simply uh, turn on my camera so I know a lot of people still like the horizontal way of taking photos but I think if you whatever you're doing if you take mainly horizontal shots okay and I have some photos here I'm sorry you're not seeing anything I'm sorry I'm just talking <laughs> But, you know, we're going to get into some things here. Okay. So, uh, hang on a minute. I need to get a drink. But we're going to talk about a few little uh, little tips and tricks about uh, taking photos. Okay. And remember, this is just coming from someone who plays with her camera and takes photos and takes a lot of photos. I'm no expert. Believe me. And believe me, there'll be um, some subscribers that will be listing tips and tricks. So please read the comment section. You might get more info there than what I'm giving. Absolutely. Okay. So when it talks about photos here, we're so used uh, to taking our camera and shooting this type of photo horizontal okay and there's nothing wrong with that but if you're used to using it in this format how about taking your camera in one simple turn you can get some different shots okay and I think vertical shots to me are more appealing but that's just me I used to think that was a left-handed thing but I don't know I don't think that is I I just think it just feels more natural for me to have my phone this way my phone I'm sorry we take you know what I'm saying? When I'm saying camera and phone, it's the same word nowadays. I'm so used to taking my camera and holding it this way. It just feels more natural, okay? Um, but I, I would say if you're someone that's used to taking this type of shot, the horizontal, simply turn your camera and get a vertical shot. And you can see, uh, this was when we were in Charleston, beautiful, beautiful place. And you see how a horizontal shot there's nothing wrong with that, but this vertical shot gives me a little bit more of uh, an architectural uh, outlook, meaning I get to see more of the building rather than just the awning and this name Louis Vuitton. Yes. Um, you see, it's more. I think it has more added interest with a vertical shot, but that's just my opinion, okay, when it comes to buildings, okay? So what else do I have here? I just pulled out some photos from this trip. Again, here's a horizontal shot. Beautiful, okay? Now, because if you see what my uh, background... I don't know if... Can you see that? I'm sorry. I was looking at it here. You probably didn't see that. I'll just show that again. Okay, there was the horizontal. There's the vertical, okay? More interest in that photo, in my opinion. Okay? Now, here we have a horizontal photo. Beautiful, okay? So, I want to show you... You see, when if you look at the subject in your photo... If you go horizontal, you're going to get a whole different angle and a different perspective if you go horizontal versus vertical. And there's no right way or wrong way. It's whatever you want. And you'll see in a lot of mine, I do both. This and this because I wanted the overall view of this, but I wanted a little bit more detail of this up here in the balcony. Okay? And so, and also to the the rooftop okay and I'll talk about this little fringe here in a minute so you see what I'm saying there's no right way or wrong way 
do both, okay? Because with digital, there's no uh, there's no cost if you take one or you take a hundred, okay? Now uh, let's talk about the next one. Uh, yes, this one. Here is another horizontal shot, okay? I'm trying to keep these in order according to my notes, but you know how I get talking. Okay, so here's another horizontal shot, and if you notice, this horizontal horizontal shot here is not straight on. I turned my camera a little bit. We're going to talk about angles in just a minute. Where I wanted to get as much of this building row as I could in Charleston. I mean, is that just not, if I can show this, look at the angle. And let me move this a minute. Look at the angle of this photo. Look at that. See how that comes down into a point? I learned that in our class in eighth grade. Yes, there's a name for that, but I can't think of it. But just simply turning your camera and turning your body in a certain way, okay? Not everything has to be straight on, okay? That was my point. That was probably long-winded, okay? And again, there's the horizontal shot. There's some vertical shots, okay? And so when you get on with the vertical shot, there I'm getting more of the buildings, so that's one perspective. But then when I single in and do a vertical, I'm getting less buildings, but I'm getting more of the architecture, and then I'm getting more of the actual city itself. And then also, too, another different angle, you can actually include a sign, <laughs> that is on the adjacent building and different just different perspectives so when you're taking a photo move your camera move your body look up look down look, look left and look right and there's there's many different angles it doesn't just have to be straight on whatever you see in front of you is what you're taking no you can tilt things and angle things okay so then also too i have here um for people, I like taking them in vertical and then landscape, you know, like something outside, I use that in the horizontal. So you just think of it this way. People uh, stand straight up and down. Uh, that's how I take, <laughs> that's how I like to take shots with people on them as a vertical because we're standing up. I like the vertical and that's what I mean, vertical. This is horizontal and this is vertical. And that's why I think I like taking people shots because we stand, okay? Now, if you're laying on the couch, then a horizontal, okay, you see what I'm saying? Pay attention to what your subject is doing. For people, most of the time we snap a photo of a person, they're standing. So try vertical shots and see if you like that a little bit better. Again, no wrong way, no right way. It's just whatever you like and getting different angles, different perspectives, okay? And then when you're out and about and you're in the element of outdoors, you know, the national, uh, the natural landscape of things just think of the horizon that is the word where the word horizontal comes from okay so it would be natural to take photos in that horizontal or landscape type of setting so again it's up to you no wrong way okay then of course experiment with different lighting and that's what i did many many times when i was playing around with my camera is that I would get something and I would put it on a kitchen stool and I would take it over by the natural lighting and I would move that thing around and move it around and move it around until I would just start learning different settings on my camera and then also to what type of day is better where in my home is it better to take a natural lighting picture things like that so you learn that that's just something that happens over time but I would say and I have about that later I think somewhere is that uh yes we'll talk about that in just a minute about practicing, which I think that's coming up next. Yes, practice, practice, practice. So when I have a note here, practice, practice inside your home and practice outside your home. Okay. Now, one of the best places I have found to practice, especially if you like flowers, is go to a greenhouse and just spend a, an hour or so going around taking close-ups. Okay. And then you'll start to know either on your phone or on your camera, what settings work good. And I will say with iPhones, and that's the only experience I have with uh, camera phones, phone cameras how that works with the iPhone is that it has such great settings right off the bat you don't really have to learn anything just keep snapping away okay now there are different things you can do in software but we'll talk about that okay so practice practice uh, and then also to uh, just get something in your home I remember one time I had a, a basket it had a bunch of ribbons I think it was an Easter basket and I would just turn that around and I would play and play different angles I would uh stand over it, stand behind it, stand to the left of it, and just to get different angles. And if you pick something in your home and take different angles of it during different light, you'll learn things just with your camera. Okay, so again, a good place is to go to a greenhouse and take pictures of flowers. Yes, very interesting, um, especially if you want to do close-ups. I think that is a good, and we'll talk about flowers here in just a minute. So my point for this was 
find something that is a favorite subject whether it be a person a place or a thing and then just practice if you like if you want to take a lot better people shots practice on your children or uh, practice on your fur baby something just practice on that and then if you have a favorite uh, place go to it and just start snapping away taking different angles different perspectives and then also to if again like for flowers okay and that is what I did in the very beginning when I was playing with my digital camera is flowers is something I love, of course, and then I wanted to learn to take better pictures. And so I will tell you, if you're still using a camera with a point and shoot, there's one setting I will tell you that made a huge difference in my photos. And what is that called? It's called the macro setting, M-A-C-R-O, macro setting. And so you can see on this camera right here, my macro is usually the flower. <laughs> You know, because we take close-ups of flower. That's not the same. That's not the case for every camera. But for a lot of cameras, your macro setting will be your little flower. And I'll cl click that button, and you'll be able to see. See how that flower just pops up? That's your macro setting. And so what it does is just gives you more definition for those close-ups. And I will tell you, I love my macro setting so much. All of these photos you see from Charleston, they were all taken on a macro setting. Even if I take something far away, I don't know, I, and each camera is different, okay? So just experiment with that macro setting, you'll be surprised. And especially get on the floor. <laughs> get a little kid's toy, a little Happy Meal toy, okay? Just a little race car or a little something. Put it on your carpet, lay on the floor, and say this is this little Happy Meal car, <laughs> okay? This is a little Happy Meal toy. So get on the floor and put your camera on the floor and see what kind of pictures you can get in that macro setting on the floor. You'd be surprised. You'll probably be there for 15 minutes playing around with that setting and that toy because you're going to get some definition in your photos. It's just a, a setting to play with. Okay. Now, let me just keep on talking. Okay, so with an iPhone, sometimes the settings are automatic, so it's just easy. Just turn on that uh, iPhone and keep on playing. Okay, now let's talk about uh, practice practice here because I'm getting carried away. <laughs> Yes, I did. I got carried away. Okay, so here's practice, practice. So here are four photos of a building, <clears throat> sorry, a building in Charleston. And I'll just set this here for a minute. Uh, so you can look at that. Okay. And I hope those are in view. Okay, and we're going to talk about getting a different uh, to practice and things of that nature. And I'm going to get another drink. Sorry. I have a little bit of a cold again. course you know my mouth doesn't stop so that's probably why my mouth gets dry all the time <laughs> okay so here are four photos now this is when I was in a buggy so of course you know I didn't get to pick how long I got time to take a photo and uh, that's why I love this little puppy but anyways I wanted to show that just with these four shots is all the same building look at the different perspective I have okay so the different perspective I have is the out front of the building but it's not straight on as in this one. So see this horizontal shot is completely different than the vertical shot. And just by turning that camera from this to this, you get a whole different perspective because this is front on. Okay. That shows the entrance, but then this shows more of the architecture of the whole building. Okay. And then another uh, perspective is that when I snapped this, I wanted to make sure I had the fringe at the top of the photo because I was in that uh, during a carriage ride. Okay. So I wanted another different perspective. So sometimes just sit back a little bit and tell yourself in your brain, what am I seeing right now? And that is what you want to capture. You're not going for perfection. You're going for a photo. Different, different. We're not photographers here. <laughs> We're just scrapbookers, okay? So, again, just turning your camera a different perspective. And then there are times you're going to take a photo, and it's not really going to be the best. <laughs> You know, look at all those electrical wires. It's just what happens. And so you can see on this, I took four photos. One is not going to be worth anything. I really don't foresee me using that. Maybe in a, a review page, but it has so many wires, it's probably not good. However, I have three choices here. So I took four. I ended up, this is okay, but with that four, I ended up with two that I really like. So sometimes that happens. You can take 10 photos and only get one you like. And that's okay too. So don't be afraid. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. Now let's talk about macro setting here for a minute. Oh, uh, yes. And here's another one I have here that you see, I really, really, really wanted this photo of this building, but you see what happened. I snapped. All I got was wires. <laughs> 
this just happens and so sometimes you have to tell yourself the best uh, best laid plans just don't work out so just move on keep snapping away yes even the bad ones just keep smacking away smacking away how about snapping away yeah <laughs> okay I don't know. Sometimes when I'm taking photos, I feel like smacking people. Yes. Anyways, but honestly, with truth be told, I think sometimes as we, as scrapbookers and we're taking photos, I think sometimes we annoy people. Yes, we do. Because I think on this carriage ride, I think I annoyed people because I was taking photos. Ask me if I cared. No, because they're not part of my memories. This is part of my memories. Absolutely. Okay. So with the macro setting, I talked about that. And then the other tip I wanted to say is simply just get closer. Yes. Getting closer. This was on a home somewhere in Charleston. And so I just stepped a little closer uh, to get more of this, uh, these beautiful flowers that people just took so much time to do. So again, that's just one tip. Step closer and to uh, get a better, um, more details okay and we'll talk about details in just a minute so then this is another uh, example i hope i was laying that correctly Ugh, sorry just step closer get closer to your subject whatever your subject is and then here is um i think this was a I'm going to say it was a bank turned church or a church turned bank. I don't know. I know I have a subscriber who lives in Charleston. Tell me what this building is, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay. And so of course this is a nice shot, but then look what I did with my next shot. I just stepped in and got a little closer of what I wanted to point out to myself when I got home. It was the pillars and of course that beautiful wrought iron. Iron. Yes. So that's what I did. I just stepped closer and I got more of a detail of the pillars in this wrought iron. Now this photo on in and of itself on its own may not be anything great, but paired with this one makes for a great shot. Okay. So that's the other thing I wanted to say when you're taking a photo, remember that that one photo you take, it doesn't have to be the, um, the best photo ever. You can take a good picture and then pair it with supporting photos. And that is how you get a great story. It might, uh, might not always happen in one photo. Okay. So now let's talk about angle. Okay. I think that's what I've been, <laughs> I've just been running at the mouth. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I'll talk about overall tips in just a minute. Okay. So let's talk about angle. Okay. So I have some photos here. And again, these are all from Charleston. Just going there and sitting there, you're going to get a good photo. It's just beautiful. Is that also to getting different angles? And so, um, I don't know if I have too many photos that are straight on. Okay. And I tried to find something. I don't know. I'm not a straight on type of person, meaning I'm always turning my camera and I'm doing an angle and I'm not just doing everything. Oh, there's a car. I'm taking a picture of that car. Oh, there's a building and I just center my camera on that building. No, I'm always turning my camera. And so that's something that becomes natural over time. Okay. It's going to feel weird in the beginning, but the more you do it, it's going to feel natural. So if you look at this photo, okay, this is not a straight on photo because I got a better photo by simply turning my camera at an angle. I mean, look at this. If I would have a straight on photo I would have just got this light and these three flower pots but because I turned my camera at an angle I got these flower pots and I got those flower pots and then I got a sign so simply just turning your camera at an angle turning your body at an angle okay and so here's another one this is simply not this is almost a straight on shot but it has a slight angle because I wanted a little bit more of this and then I didn't just want a straight on picture I don't know if I can turn that straight I did not want a straight on picture of that door I think it gives more interest when you give your uh, photos an angle okay and here's another one here's a different angle not meaning that my photo itself is angled it's meaning look at the angle of what I'm seeing at okay let me point I had a pointer here somewhere I don't know where it went. <clears throat> so in this photo, and this is just sometimes, I think the more you snap, this is what happens, is that you will see a photo. How do I want to say this? You can see a photo in your mind in real life quicker than when you snap the camera. Meaning that when you take photos for a long period of time, you see a photo before you snapped. So this is what I mean. So this is what I saw quickly and I knew to snap is that I have, I think this is some kind of chapel or something. I'm not quite sure. And then this is a carriage in Charleston. And then over here as part of the, uh, the market that their city market that they're known for. So this angle, even though I didn't turn my camera, it's the angle of what I'm seeing. I'm seeing these three items right here in one shot love that I love when my brain can see these um, before I even 
before I snapped the photo, this is what I saw. I saw that. I was like, oh man, that makes a great shot. Okay. And that happens with the more photos you take. So sometimes an angle isn't turning your camera. It's seeing what is in your background. Okay. Look at that angle. Okay. And then here's another one. This is uh, one of these, uh, one of the things I wanted to say when you're looking at different angles, architecture is the most, I think it's the, one of the best things to take a photo of, but then I love architecture. Okay. Is that you simply, as this is a corner, okay. In the uh, Charleston. Okay. So as I'm walking from here to while I'm walking around the here, okay. Cause this is on a corner, you can get so many different angles of just this one doorstep and this iron, uh, wrought iron work. Each time I take a step, okay, and I say if I kept going around the corner and I snapped a photo every time I took a snap step, you're going to get a different angle. So play with that too when you're out and about taking photos. Take a photo, take a step, take a step, take a photo. And every time you take a step, you're going to get a different angle of the subject you were taking a photo of. Okay, just another little tip. And then here again, this actually mirrors this type of photo here. If I would have just took a straight on photo, all you would see is this grass and foliage on this building. But the fact that I took my camera and my body and I angle, angled it, you see the shot that I got. It's the same as this building right here, the shot right here, angle, okay? I just turned my camera at an angle instead of straight on like this all the time. I turn it just like with an angle. That's all. Just like a little turn of the wrist can make a big difference in your photos. Look at that. That's just simply an angled shot. No, doesn't take any expert <laughs> on that. Just turn your camera at an angle just a little bit and snap sure, uh, you know, capture that snapshot of what your eye is seeing. Sometimes that means moving your body at an angle. So don't forget that. Okay. So, and then that, no, no, <laughs> sorry about that. Duh, duh, duh. Now let's keep on talking about getting better photos. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just uh, showing you some tips and tricks I learned over the over the years, playing with my camera and playing with different um, ways to take a photo. Okay, so the other thing is detail shots. Now, when I say detail shots, this is one of those things that is subjective, meaning take a photo of the things that your eye sees that you think other people would have missed, okay? So we were just walking the streets of Charleston and we're just walking by and I noticed that this gate was open and you saw this little bit of this alleyway. And so it's just a different angle, a different detail shot that most people would have walked by and not paid any attention to, but it, it captured my attention. And so that's what I mean by details. Whatever captures your attention, snap it. You know? And if that means the people with you have to wait, they'll get used to it. Just get them a nice lunch. Okay. That's what I do. Okay. And again, this was one of those other photos I was talking about is that <clears throat> this is when I was first on the carriage ride is that um, when I, was, I saw this building and when I took this photos, I noticed that the fringe of the carriage... <laughs> was in this photo. Now, most people would say, oh, that got in the way of my photo. No, to me, that fringe of that carriage, because that's what I was doing, was part of the photo. So keep that in mind. The things that is in your background is part of your photo as well. And then also too, with this carriage ride, the details that some people would not, would have thought, oh, this is getting in my way. To me, this is part of my photo because this is what my eye saw, is that the um, driver of this carriage or uh, conductor of the carriage, whatever they call that, the tour guide, you know, they have that, um, oh, I don't even know what you call it, to keep the horses in line, <laughs> okay? I used that one time as part of my photo as we were approaching the city market. So some people would say, oh, that got in the way of my photo. In my brain, that's part of my photo because that was what my experience was, okay? So keep that in your mind. Other than power lines, power lines get in my, <laughs> they get in my way. And then something like this. This is just absolutely a simple photo of the foliage uh, that was in Charleston and this brick pathway that was just, um, it was just in the corner of something. It wasn't mainstream. And so it was something that caught my eye, okay? And so if you're a detailed person, Take that detail uh, that you see in your brain and uh, translate it through your camera, taking these detail shots. And again, that's subjective. What you think is a detail, other people would just look over and say, what are you taking a picture of that? It's, it's up to you, okay? I take photos of everything and anything you can see, okay? And then also, too, I wanted to show you with all these photos here. Notice how many people <clears throat> are in my photos. Now, I was in Charleston, of course. Of course, you went there. I didn't go there to see people, but the point I wanted to make is, is that when you're taking photos, 
people do not have to be in a photo for this to be a photo. And I noticed that some of my subscribers, we've been talking about that over the last several months, as that a lot of people have said to me, they never thought to take a photo of this, or they never thought to take a photo of that. They never thought to take a photo of this. If it didn't have a person in it, then it wasn't worth taking your camera out and snapping. That is totally wrong because all of these details make up our life. It's not just people, even though we love people. Okay. But, um, if you want to experiment, uh, with your camera and taking better photos, I think the, uh, the last thing to try on is people. Cause I think it's very hard to take photos of people. I'm not an expert in any of this. It's just what I found to be easier. I find, uh, inanimate objects <laughs> easier to take and to learn from with different angles and everything. So maybe start with that. Okay. Go outside, find some pretty flowers and start snapping away. Okay. And then that was my last uh, point. Point. snap away snap away play 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 that's the best way you're going to get some better photos along the way is to absolutely um and i'll talk with these tips in just one more minute is just snap away and keep on playing and that means taking outside go find something that's interesting to you and take 25 photos and then come in and then say oh well what worked what what lighting what angle what setting and you'll start to see what you like okay so that was my tips uh, for taking some better photos. Again, just my tips. I'm not an expert. It's just that turn your camera. Uh, you know, if you're always used to doing horizontal, take some vertical. If you're always used to taking vertical, uh, try the horizontal and then experiment with different lighting. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, look at to the macro setting if you're still using a point and shoot. And then also too, don't forget taking different angles getting in closer with those detail shots. Every photo does not need a person and there's nothing wrong with having permission to just play and play when you get better photos. And so with this Charleston trip, I don't know how many photos I took, didn't really matter. Uh, on my last Disney trip where I was by myself, I took 1,102 photos. <laughs> Yes. Now, why print all of them? Probably pretty much of them. But what I'm saying is just because I took uh, 200 photos this day doesn't mean I have to print them all. But we'll talk about that when we uh, get into printing and things like that. So that is probably, oh, no, I'm not going to end there. <laughs> now we got to talk about editing and tagging. Oh, sorry. <laughs> talk, talk, talk. Okay. But this is all about photos, right? So let's just dig our heels in and keep on talking. So I'm going to go to page three. Okay. Editing and tagging. Now, since I was talking about how many photos I took on this trip, let's talk about deleting photos first. Okay, so for deleting photos, again, this is going to be a personal preference. Um, for me, I delete as I go. So when I came back and I was um, at a different location this evening when I was at Charleston, and when I was back in my uh, hotel room, I went and I looked at the photos I took that day, and anything that was bad... I deleted or I just left them alone. It didn't matter. I'm not, I didn't go through each one and get rid of every bad one. It's just that, you know, sometimes you turn your camera on, you get a picture of your foot or your lap or, you know, the side of someone's ear. I delete those type of photos. Okay. Because what you see on a little screen uh, might not translate to what you get into a big photo. Now, see, some people might have thought that was a bad shot. No, I only uh, delete the ones that I know for a fact or the blurred ones, um, you know, you're getting someone's ankle, that type of thing, <laughs> you delete those. So I delete as I go, but in the beginning, what I used to do is when I downloaded my photos, and then before I saved them, I would go in and I would just delete the ones I didn't. That took too much time. I just got tired of that task. So now I delete as I go. And when I download, I download everything and I save everything. I just don't have to print that photo. Okay. So that kind of took one of those little tasks off my to-do list. But again, deleting photos is something, you know, it's up to you when you do it. Delete them as you go or maybe before you download or before you save. Okay. Or not do any of it. <laughs> you don't have to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, and then it's the same way with editing. I got asked some questions as how do I edit my photos? And do you want to know the God's honest answer? I don't edit a single photo. I do not edit a single photo. Which goes back to my point. The better uh, camera you have, the better photos you're going to have. The better photos you have, you don't need to edit. No, you do not need to edit. Um, if you're a hobbyist, <laughs> we're scrapbookers, okay? Now, photographers... They're going to edit and edit and edit and edit because that is part of their profession is the editing. Okay, but for me as a scrapbooker, I have no desire to edit, never going to, never had it, just don't have the desire to. And I also, I don't think I have the need to because here's my point, and I think I'm getting off track. Okay, 
I, I better go to my notes here. Okay, I have a note here that says, uh, the longer, I don't, file, I don't feel the need to edit because the longer that you snap photos, you know, we're hobbyists, the better they get. Okay. So I just don't, I've just never seen the need to edit. Okay. I just really don't. And then also too, the only editing that I would say, if this is editing that I would do is that once in a while, if I would get a, a dark photo, but I still wanted that image, I would go in and I would just simply set, select auto adjust just to lighten up the, uh, the photo but that's very rare that I do that but you know sometimes when you're in like with parties and retirement parties and reunions and you're inside a building and you're taking a group shot sometimes you know the photos do get dark so that would be the, about the only time I do edit a photo if you consider auto adjust editing I don't know <laughs> it's just an option okay but once in a while I'll do that if I still want that image and I think it could be a little bit better but as far as going in with Photoshop and doing this and no I don't do any of that I don't because I honestly believe the better camera you have the better photos you have the better photos you have there's no need to edit that's just how I look at it but we're gonna talk about when it comes to printing and the editing and how that all comes into play too we're gonna talk about that because it depends on your processor it depends on your printing we're gonna need to talk about editing again because there may be a need for that but uh, we'll talk about that but then also too sometimes I would print in black and white or sepia tone if that's considered editing, that's the only options. That's the only three things I do. Black and white, sepia, or auto adjust if my image is too dark. And I don't know if I have anything. Most of these are uh, outdoor, so the lighting isn't going to be too bad. But you know how you get those dark photos, okay? And sometimes I would go in, maybe this one. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, if a photo is too dark, you could go in and hit auto adjust. But um, you have to... Again, that's going to depend on if you're printing at home or an online processor. Okay. So now let's talk about, oh yeah, that was my next note. <laughs> a lot will depend on the event, you know, your lighting, your camera, and your processor, whether you're printing at home or you're doing it online. But I skip this step. I, I just don't do it. And here's, here's my point of view for editing. Again, this is my point of view. I don't want to edit my photo too much. Okay, I'll put this one. And I'll pick another one here. Don't you just love having a group of photos to play with? Yes. Okay, I'll pick another one here. Uh, yes, this one. Or, you know, this, this just pick this one. I get lost here. I'll get sidetracked when I'm looking at photos. Okay? Is that I don't edit too much because I definitely could go in and I could change the lighting. I could change the shadowing. I could change the tone of this a burgundy in this gray. But I don't want to. Okay? I just saw today in Photoshop. Uh, because, you know, I'm just always reading something. I don't even own Photoshop, so why am I watching this? I don't know. But you can absolutely, there's a setting in Photoshop that you can go in and you can turn on, say these lanterns here, you can go in and you can uh, use an, an option in Photoshop and you could turn on those lights. I mean, in your editing of your, of your photos, that blows my mind. But the reason I don't want to edit is because what I see is what I want. So if I go in and start adjusting with this, adding in that option of putting and lighting these lanterns, even though I think they may be lit, <laughs> I don't want to edit my photo too much because I don't want, I don't want to edit what my memory was, if that makes sense. The more editing I do with my photo, it's not going to be the realistic view of what I saw when I snapped that photo. So that's again just my personal opinion but then I'm not a photographer I'm just someone who snaps photos <laughs> okay so again some of that we're going to talk about more in printers and processing okay now let's talk about tagging photos hmm, 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 hmm. because as you are downloading and saving and deleting uh, editing, I think editing sometimes goes right before your printing, which is what we're talking about now, but then tagging, sometimes that tagging will fall in where you want it to tag, okay? Some people tag after they save, people sometimes people tag before, and what does yours truly do? I do no tagging whatsoever, <laughs> because I will tell you why. When tagging was first introduced, and I'm talking way back in the day, like 13 years ago, when tagging was first introduced to me, I was like, oh, this is going to be a great option, I'm going to do that. Well, I will tell you truthfully, I think tagging is what caused me to get behind in my photo printing. And to this day, 2019, I still have not gotten caught up because tagging took six to eight months. And I just was on this continuous carousel of tagging and tagging and tagging. 
What a huge waste of my time. And I'll tell you why. That's not true for everybody. I'm just saying about me why it was a waste of my time. Because I I download and I save chronologically. And so if I wanted to access my photos, it would be in a chronological ma manner. So I did not need to tag my photos because that's not how I would access them. Okay. So I didn't know that at the time I didn't pay attention to that. And I didn't think, okay, well, how are you going to access these? You save every month. Okay, I'm going to go to that month. I'm not going to access Sally and Johnny and uh, Raphael. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Okay, that sounded like Sally, Jesse, Raphael. Yes, remember her. Okay, but anyways, oh, raccoon, raccoon. Oh, get together here. If you are going to access your photos in the manner that you want all of Sally's, you want all of Jesse's, you want all of Raphael's, if you want that, then you certainly need to tag your photos. And again, that depends on what device you're using to uh, download and save your uh, photos. So that will be an option for you. But for most of us who download and save on a recurring basis, give yourself a minute's notice to think, do I really even need to tag these? And for some of you, the answer is going to be a definite yes, you need to tag. By all means, you should be. For someone like me, tagging was a huge waste of my time because I will never use that option when I go to access my photos. And so again, that took about six to eight months off my printing schedule way back in the day, and I have never got caught up since. So when I hear the word tagging, I just want to hit my head on, <laughs> on the table because it just it took a time out of what I could have been printing. That's all I'm going to say. But again, if you access your photos that way, then you do need to tag, okay? But for me, I don't, I don't access my photos by a category or a person or a place. It's usually by date. So lesson learned there. Okay, so again, lost time. Okay, and I think that's the end of my page three notes. Oh, wow, and this is just one section. Okay. okay, so I think this is where I'm going to end this segment as far as taking better photos, editing, tagging, that type of thing, because otherwise the video, video will get too long. And then what I really want to encourage you is to read the comments below, because I'm sure there'll be people that will have much more advice and expert tips about taking better photos than I can offer. I'm just someone that has taken photos for many years and I enjoy the process, but I am in no means an expert. And with that, I want to leave you with one one more tip. You can take all the photography courses you want. You can get the most expensive camera you can get. But when it comes to recording the story, taking that photo, taking that snapshot, capturing that moment, it is really a subjective manner, meaning it's what your eye sees and what you want to remember. There's no wrong way to do this. Absolutely. So keep that in the back of your mind. You can see some professional people take pictures and you think that's what I want. But if that's not what you want to remember, if that's not the part of the story you want to record, then it doesn't matter. Just enjoy this process and snap, snap, snap away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So that's all I have for today at RTS. Come back because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.